Europe, Asia, Australia, South America, uh, everywhere else, the private sector is building a lot. China, communist China, has way more cases where the private sector is involved in building roads than the United States does. I think this poll is, is going to be important and, and people are going to pay attention for two reasons. One, it's a, it's a good national survey, 1,200 people, a good uh, demographic mix and geographic mix from around the country with a good level of accuracy. And we worked very hard to ask some questions that aren't typically asked in transportation polls. So the idea is to generate some information that policymakers can actually use that they don't usually get. The federal government is allegedly going to do a transportation bill this coming year. It usually doesn't happen in election year, but there'll be a lot of debate in Washington about transportation, and it's always an issue for local government. The biggest problems that people identified is first that for, for the vast majority of people, Congestion's been getting worse, and they think congestion's gonna keep getting worse. We've spent a lot of money on transit in uh, cities in the last uh, 30 years, and in spite of that, the poll shows uh, sort of what we already knew, which is not very many people ride public transit. About two-thirds of people say that the government uh, generally doesn't spend transportation money very well. More than half of people say the transportation system they use is not in good shape. It's a very opaque system. People don't know how much they pay. I mean, you ask the average person how much gas tax they pay, and they have no idea. Uh, they think the gas tax goes up when the gas prices go up, even though it doesn't. So they don't know how much they pay, and they don't know where it's being spent because there's not a very good system by which the government says, here's where your tax dollar, your gasoline tax dollars are going. People just see that nothing seems to change. Their commute continues to be congested. They're not driving on a new road, usually. They look at that and they look at things like the bridge to nowhere, you know, which is kind of a trivial thing in a lot of ways, but it's emblematic. It's a poster child for a system of politicians spending the transportation money based on politics rather than how can we make the transportation system better. We ask people about you know, where the priorities should be for transportation spending and about two to one people said we should focus spending on roads and the highway system because that's the system that most people use and that's the system that carries most of the goods that have to get around uh, you know, our cities and our rural areas versus spending the money on trying to get people to stop using their cars and use some other form of transportation or, or stay home or whatever. For a long time we've had this idea that if, if we expand the road system where we spend more money on roads then that those roads just fill up so if you add lanes to the congested freeway pretty soon more people just say oh well the freeway is working better now so i'll drive on the freeway and it just gets congested growth and more people traveling just recongest the road no matter how much you expand it and there's some truth to that if you make travel better more people travel but more people are traveling so Yes, you may get congestion back after a few years, but it's congestion with more people able to travel. So you're still better off as a community because more people can get where they want to go. And people have more choices about how to get there because you have a bigger and better system. What we've been doing for the last 20 years is investing a lot more money in public transit than people who ride public transit. So, you know, in a typical city, uh, a large city in America, you've got something like five to ten percent of the people riding public transit, but you're spending twenty-five to forty percent of the money on it, which means the roads are basically going to pot because they're carrying ninety percent of the traffic but only getting sixty percent of the money. The system hasn't been working and people, you know, clearly seem to be saying, hey, let's have the resources predominantly go to roads. We asked if, if people thought uh, we should raise the gas tax in about Two-thirds said, no, we should not raise the federal gas tax, so, and that wasn't a very surprising result. People don't think the money's being spent well, so they're not going to support raising that fee. So we asked about uh, other choices, like if, uh, if you're going to build a new freeway in your city or add lanes to an existing freeway, would you rather uh, pay for that with tolls or with uh, increased taxes? And about two-thirds of people said we'd rather pay for it with tolls, and about 60% of people um, said uh, they would pay a toll 
on a new road if it would make their trip uh, significantly shorter. We also asked about um, uh, public-private partnerships, so basically having the private sector come in and, uh, and pay for building a new road and obviously charge people to use it. And, and if it's a new road, about 55% of people supported having the private sector build new roads if, if it makes sense in their city. About one third of all the new freeway lanes that have been built in the United States in the last 10 years have been tolled. So tolling is actually quite a significant part of how we build new roads in this country now. In the United States, those kind of public-private partnerships are not really that popular compared to the rest of the world. We've got a culture of the government owns and controls the roads, and we have trouble letting go of that. And while the rest of the world is saying, you know, these things are like electric utilities and water utilities, you know, you got to regulate them because you don't always have choices, but the private sector can do it and you can pay to use it. The government is taking a lot of money from people in taxes to pay for transportation. They've got to do a better job of being transparent without where that money is going and being efficient. They're not very efficient with how they spend it. If people see, okay, look, you know, I see where all the money is going and I see there's no more money to build this new road, I might be more willing to pay a toll for that road. So it's the, the murkiness of the existing system that creates a lot of resistance to paying for tolls on new roads. Another thing we asked about in the poll is how much do people trust, you know, different government. You might not be surprised that people trust their local government a lot more than their state, which both of which they trust a lot more than they trust the federal governments. That's really relevant to transportation because, you know, if you look at our survey results on transportation specifically, there's a lot of distrust in the government in general in terms of transportation. The onus now is on the government, okay, if they're going to keep the job of doing transportation, they're going to have to do a better job of it. Or they need to bring in the private sector and get projects done in a way that will build people's trust because they know what they're paying and they know what they're getting. The, the hot idea um, with, at the federal government level for the past few years in the Obama administration has been high-speed rail. That's been their big transportation uh, push. Uh, we asked in our survey whether people think that if high-speed rail is built, should the government build the high-speed rail lines between the major cities that are being talked about, or should the private sector build high-speed rail lines when they see there's enough people that are willing to pay for it? And about <laughs> two to one people said it's better to have the private sector build it when they see there's enough customers than to have the government build it you know, without really worrying about customers in most cases. The federal role in transportation has really been undergoing a lot of change. Uh, for a long time, you know, in the 60s and 70s, we were building the interstate system, and that was all the federal government. And then when they finished building the interstate system, the federal government still collected a lot of money, and they gave that to the states to expand the roads and, and fund a lot of public transit systems and maintain the interstates. Um, but a lot of it became kind of pork barrel. Local governments have the real problems. I mean, our transportation problems are not that there's not enough freeway from Oklahoma to Missouri. That's not the problem. There's not that there's not enough freeway, you know, from New Hampshire to North Carolina. Generally speaking, there's enough interstate. What we don't have is enough freeway in D.C., in Chicago, in Atlanta, in Denver. You know, we have congestion in those cities because there's more people traveling than we have room to travel. Basically, the government is going to have to figure out how to do a better job with that money and prove to people that they're doing a better job with that money. If they can see the benefit and they can see their trip getting better, they'll pay a toll. And if the private sector has to build the thing because the government doesn't have the money and pay for it with that toll, they're fine with that. In a lot of ways, transportation policy making is not really about providing what the people want, but providing what the government you know, wants to see for outcomes. So they may want to see less travel, they might want to see less sprawl, they might want to see less greenhouse gas emissions, and so they say, well, we're going to do transportation spending designed to accomplish those things, and the fact that people want a transportation system that makes it easier to get places is not really relevant. We've spent a lot of resources trying to get more people to quit driving and use public transit or walk or bicycle. We haven't had great results from that. As many people telecommute now as ride transit or walk or bike or carpool. And so people say, hey, spend the money on the system that we all use. Well, the first purpose of the transportation system should be to provide people with mobility. And then if there's 
efficient ways to address other problems in transportation policy, that's worth considering, but you can't put the cart before the horse.